Hi everyone, Eric Carter here, and welcome to my first impressions of Mac OS X Mavericks. Now, I've been playing around with this for about 30 minutes now, and I'm going to give you my first impressions. Now, this is by no means a full review, so this is not my final verdict, but this is what I've noticed right off the bat as soon as I started using Mavericks. Now, let's show you quickly the settings, as this is one of the things I went into first, and you'll notice the settings look a bit bigger, a bit chunkier, and there's an additional button right here, which is the App Store. And what this allows you to do now is have updates downloaded in the background, and they'll also install if you so wish as well. So that's really quite cool. So I do like that implementation right there. Next thing I'm going to show you is Launchpad. Now, with the pinch of my fingers, you can see there's a stutter. And that is very buggy. That looks very buggy. And that is not a good thing right there. So, And if I swipe, do you notice that, that sort of like uh, freeze it does? I just swipe with two fingers and it froze. Now, normally this never shows up whenever you do, whenever I do these kind of videos. However, it's happened quite often that even on video it's actually showing now. So, yeah, I'm not really impressed right here. I really do think wish Apple resolved these. Now, this has actually got fixed, but what happened earlier I've noticed is that when I'm swiping between these uh, pages, and I'm doing it quite rapidly right now. But there was always a glitch. It's like it always like just had a like a couple freeze frames when I was like, swiping. But now it's very silky smooth, which is quite good. And you can notice the folders have also changed it up right as well, right here as well, which is really quite nice. And uh, here's iBooks, and we'll get to that maps in a minute. But let me quickly show you iBooks. Pop it open, and here's Life of Pi. I did not pay for any of these, by the way. These were free. Now, if I double click. It'll say your computer is not authorized. Now, I have not really looked into this at all. I've only spent about five, about uh, ten seconds looking into it, and then I just got put off. I mean, I put my password and my login details here at the start, and I think that should be authorization enough. Otherwise, I'm just kind of put off by iBooks even more than I was before this. So, good job, Apple, right there. So, let's just remove that. And we're going to have to get to it, aren't we? Ah, oh, there's maps, and uh, yeah, I just look at this as bloatware, really. I really don't care for this at all. So, there you go. You all know what maps is, and to tell you the truth, I'd rather use Google Maps or Google Earth. Now, going back onto Launchpad, as you can see, there's a, as I said, there's a stutter when you actually just pinch, quick, doing quick pinches, but this is, there's something actually new here, which Apple have introduced, which... To tell you the truth, I think is really like the icing on the cake, but the cake seems to have gone off a bit. Now, normally what you do is like quickly pinch your fingers, but now I'm going to actually keep my fingers on the trackpad and I'm going to pinch out just a little bit. You can see that? It's actually like faded away a little bit. Now if I move my fingers a bit more, it's faded up a bit more, a bit more. There, it's completely gone. Now if I do the same by pinching in instead of out, you can see I can like just very gently control this just using my fingers. So if I keep my fingers on the, on the trackpad, I can actually control this. Now I'm going to make it go out, and I'm going to pinch in. As you can see, it's really quite smooth, and that is quite good. Now that's the reason why there's a noticeable lag. When you do it very quick pinches, as you can see, this happens, which is a shame. So yeah, Apple, definitely get onto this and give that a fix. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is another kind of gesture difference that Apple have done. Now let me just load up my Safari, my TweetDeck. Uh, let's also load up... There you go, I, IA Writer as well, which Apple want you to sort of use their iCloud service on and stuff. But anyway, now, I've got quite a few things loaded up here, and let's also just pop over, open the settings. Normally you do it like this, it happens very quickly. Although now with Mavericks, you can even control this as well. So if I just pinch my fingers out a little bit, you can, and now I'm going to hold my fingers. But now as you can see, that's, quite, that's also quite cool. As I say, it's the icing on the cake. And unlike Launchpad, there's no problems with this whatsoever. If I do it fast... It'll quickly go. If I want to, like, just for whatever reason, I like, just slow it down and go like this, I can, and it's very smooth. Now, there's no reason why you'd want to do this, as it's just much quicker just to have a quick glance at your desktop by doing it very quickly than then pinching in very quickly. So, there's no purpose for it. It's just for the kind of like eye candy, really. So, yes, that's, that's what I've noticed right there. And, again, nothing big, but it's things that add to the experience. Now, as you see, I'm on Safari, and let me open up a new tab here. Now what I'm actually going to do is just go on to YouTube. And the website I've noticed has got loaded things a bit quicker. Now it's really d down to your Wi-Fi connection. But the browser I've noticed is more responsive than the previous version of Safari. Although I, I'm going to give it another chance because I said Safari is the worst web browser I've ever used in my whole entire life. Although I'm going to give this newer version a chance. And let's hope it doesn't keep crashing on me like the previous version did and it caused me so much problems. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. Let me just go into 
my channel. Let me just scroll onto one of these videos. Now I'm going to scroll like slowly. If I scroll slowly, I'm noticing that the scrolling is not as loose and it's not as sensitive as it was with the previous version of uh, Mac OS X, Mountain Lion. Instead, it seems quite less sensitive and it seems more tight when I'm scrolling. It's something you really got to feel in order to understand. You won't be able to understand just by watching the video. Now, if I scroll, like, just like do fast, faster scrolls, there's quick. It's like it's fine. But if you want to like just do small scrolls, it. I wish there was a setting to like adjust the sensitivity, as it does feel a bit, a bit like it's lagging behind my actual fingers and touches on the trackpad, which does seem a bit off. So I do hope they would resolve that. And there's many other features of Safari, although I'm not going to go into them right now as I've barely spent much time with it. But I have noticed that it is a bit better to use right now. Now I'm going to use my two fingers and swipe. And as you can see, we've still got this kind of like notification center right here. With the previous version of Mountain Lion, I, I think I can't remember if I did this myself or if it was like that from the get-go with Mountain Lion. But when I used to bring this menu up, it would automatically show this right over here. And that was great for me. I could instantly, like, very quickly do tweets, although now it gives me the Apple uh, messaging service, which I never, ever use. It shows me Twitter, which I use a lot, and Facebook, which I rarely ever use as well. Now, I wish there was an option for me to pretty much get rid of those two and just instantly gain access to this panel right here so I can instantly write a tweet. That's what I could normally do with the previous version, although now it's going to require me to do an extra click. It normally did make the experience seem like very fast and productive on Mac OS, so I do hope there's an option for me to actually uh, change that, although I haven't really had much of a look. And I notice there's another button over here. Now this gives you access to Do Not Disturb, and then there's also various other options here for how you want your notifications to be shown. So you can have them be shown in banners, alerts, or none. Now this, I'm not sure if it was in the previous version, this kind of option, but it seems a lot like iOS right around here, because this is what you also get with iOS, these kind of options. So I really hope they don't go down that route, but there you go. And in regards to notifications, what you'll actually get is once you actually get a notification pop up around over here, you know, this one right over here, what you'll get is an option to actually reply to that uh, notification right from the notification itself. It'll allow you to automatically reply to it right there and then. Now, I haven't in 30 minutes I've been playing around with this. I haven't got any kind of messages like that, although I have received uh, messages from Twitter, both from TweetDeck and from the website, how that sort of like syncs into macOS. And both of those I wasn't able to reply there and then. So this leads me to believe that app developers have to update their apps for this new notification feature, which... Yeah, I did think that would have to happen, but there you go, again, that's something that's going to have to happen. You have to just wait out a little bit, and the developers should be on top of things. Now let's move over to Finder, which is one of the bigger kind of features of Mavericks. And you'll notice over here, right off the bat, you've got tags. So what tags basically does is if I just say, when I like tag this, let's just tag it to this red, it'll show that little red circle there. If I click on the red one, this goes in there now. It's a part of the family photos. So that's a really quite a neat feature to like keep everything organized. Now I'm just going to remove this. And if I click away, it disappears. It's easy as that. It really is cool. Now, another thing is if I just, like, say, press Command T, I've got a new tab opened up. And you can do the same by pressing File and New Tab. So that's really quite neat right there. And this, normally what you'd always have to do is, like, go, what I would, at least what I would do with previous versions is either press Trash. Well, most of the time I would always press Trash. And when you press trash, it will open up a new window, then there you go, I've got a new finder window. And now you've got a workaround. If you drag one of these tabs down, and let's just say open it up over here, then you'll also get another finder window opened up, which is uh, really quite neat. Now, I really wish they went the Windows kind of route, which is which is where if you just double-click my computer again, it'll open up a new window. So, in terms of managing your files and stuff, I think Microsoft in uh, Windows has got a much better sort of way of, con of keeping uh, like control of all of that. Now, I'm going to show you a bad thing of Finder, and this is something which does really kind of cripple my experience right here, and does put a dampener on it as well. Now, if I go onto my documents, you can see everything is neatly laid out. Now, you do have full screen, but when I go into full screen, it doesn't automatically reflow. Now, this should reflow, otherwise this seems like very out of place. And if you do resolve everything, uh, well, like I did here, you'll get this. And now... Yes, it's a bit out of order myself, which I should just change, but what will happen now is, as you can see, this is all organized. Now, if I just minimize this, it doesn't reflow. As you can see, it's all like this. So I think it should definitely reflow the applications when I make this window larger and smaller. That's uh, something I really don't like, and I really hope Apple resolve this as soon as they can.
But yeah, overall, the Finder is nicer to use and it'll be much more enjoyable to actually gain access to all of your files, which I really, really do like. Now that pretty much is Mac OS X Mavericks. Now as I said, I've been only using it for about 30 minutes and those are the things that I mostly noticed. There are other features as well, like much better battery life and better performance, although I haven't used this enough to sort of like come to that conclusion yet. But so far, things do seem very good, although there are some loose ends which Apple really need to quickly resolve. Like the launch pads, like just looking like, like, you know, like very glitchy whenever you're using it. The fact that it sticks as well. And also the problem with the finder. And yeah, that's pretty much it really. The problem with the finder, I'd say, is the biggest sort of like issue. I can deal with this right here if I just get used to the sort of like scheme of actually like, you know, completely like using the whole entire trackpad in order to get this to run smoothly. But yeah, apart from all that, I'm pretty happy with this update, and the fact that it's free, I can't really complain. Well, even if it's free, you still want the update to be very robust. Plus, I, I'm, I'm a new Mac user, I've been using a Mac for quite a few months now, and this is the first update I've actually got, and it seems quite welcome that I've actually got my first new update for my uh, Mac is free. Although my laptop did cost about 1,500 quid, which is a lot for me to fork out for my first ever laptop, but, uh, you know, at the end, I'm still pretty happy. And I hope the performance features and battery saving features are going to work out very well with uh, Mavericks. So if I find anything like more impressive or if I think that Mavericks has really impressed me, I'll come back with a full review and cover it more. But if you want me to cover more features of Mavericks, then do leave a comment down below and I will try and upload the video. So thank you guys very much for watching. This has been Eric from ecotman12.blogspot.com. Please thumbs up, comment and subscribe, and I'll see all of you next time. Take care.